So today is the one year anniversary. And I hate to say anniversary because you think of something happy, but there's nothing happy about this story. This makes one year since we were released from the penal form, from the first arrest. And so many emotions, so many things running through my mind, and I'm trying to stay focused, trying to stay positive. You know, I've gotten so many wonderful, encouraging words from people, from social media, and I'm so grateful and so thankful. And I try not to let my emotions get the best of me, but it's like, how can you not think of doing harm to someone or think about why they not getting there? It's just so many thoughts, you know, can run through your head. But one thing I will say is when I look back and I think about how good God is and how he protected me and my family while we was in that uncomfortable situation, it let me know that no matter what you're going through, God's still there. He still held our hand. He kept me in my right mind because I'm telling you when them doors close you in that room with so many different people personalities just that whole thought of not having control of your situation you literally have to listen to someone else tell you what to do now don't get me wrong they they not holding you back from using the bathroom or stuff like that, you know, natural stuff that has to happen. But I couldn't leave out of there or go into a private room like I can have free will now. So it's a lot that plays in your mind when you in those type of places and you thinking about, when am I going to get out? That's like the biggest question that's floating in your head. When am I going to get out of here? How is my family doing? For me, how my kids doing? How's my husband doing? How's my mother doing? My nieces, my nephew, my other sister that was out. Like all type of stuff was running through my head. And I never forget when I was at my lowest moment. And it was that Wednesday after finding out that the judge was not going to release us until that Monday. And we had already been there since the other Monday. And when I got that phone call and it was my sister that took and she came back to tell um, me and my other sister that she wasn't releasing us. And, y'all, it was like the world had crashed on me. My stomach immediately started getting knots in it and feeling like the life was sucked out of me. And the ladies that come and do the Bible study comes on Wednesday that particular um, week. And... When no women came in there, baby, I ran to go get me and my sisters some Bibles because it was like, that's the only hope that we got to keep our minds steady. And when you laying on a mat on the floor with just a sheet and this holy um, wool-like, um, blanket over you and then I got a lady that's a 1099 sleeping next to me she's jumping up in the middle of the night hollering and screaming cussing and all that stuff I was getting trauma and PTSD was sitting in so hard on me to it was like God I know I got to get closer to you because this this is not normal. 
this is not what life is supposed to be. This is shouldn't be my reality. But then when you think about it, you like, when you question stuff like that, you have to think about why not you? You know that God has you. You got a date. Having a date in there is really the only hope that you have being in a place like that. But when you don't know your date, you don't have any new news, you will lose your mind. Literally lose your mind. So, I say all this to say, God put us in that situation to not only to reveal the people that did this to us, but to give other people encouragement as well, because we did some good work while we was in there. We were praying over women. We were giving them hope. We wanted better for them, even though they didn't see better for themselves. So I'm thankful, even though that was a traumatic situation to go through. And that being the first time that we went in. And then now, here in April, I had to go back. And this time, two weeks. And luckily, I documented that because I want my story to impact people in a good way that God speaks to you. God revealed things to you, whether you want to listen to it or not. God give you the warnings and he gave me that warning. He even told me I was going to be a vessel for his plan. And I thank the Lord that he kept me in my right mind. I said I was not going to be emotional. I wasn't going to cry because I know God is in the blessing business. And trust me, whatever you're going through, God will fix it. He will fix it. So make sure y'all continually pray for everyone, not just yourself, but everyone, because you don't know what battle that the next individual is going through. So it's going to go over to my next clip. So make sure y'all um, like, comment, and subscribe, and then go over, um, keep watching because you're going to see the second half of this.